Well, with the regular season wrapped up, the 2021-2022 NBA award season is upon us. The hottest debate, the most valuable player. It's a super tight race for a few weeks ago, maybe less of one recently. Nikola Jokic going for a second consecutive time taking home that award. Joel Embiid, even Giannis Antetokounmpo peeking over that shoulder, though, making that race interesting throughout the season. We take a look at the numbers. Not only are Jokic's raw stats impressive, let's see, 27 points, 13 rebounds, 7.9 assists, but he also became the first player ever this season to accumulate 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 500 assists in a single campaign. We've got to slow down though, because Embiid's per game numbers, they're obscene. Take a look there 30.6 points, 11.7 rebounds, 4.2 assists. The points warranting a scoring title. The assists are career high. So who is going to take home the award? Let's ask our expert NBA champion as we welcome in our Rip Hamilton. So NBA regular season is complete. It means it is award time and we want to get Rip Hamilton's NBA award. So we're going to start with MVP. This is the big hot topic there. Who's your pick? I'm going with Jenny. I'm going with Joel and B. Guy's been incredible all year. I know Joker. You look at his stats. You see all the points and rebounds he done. Uh, he done did this year better stats than he had last year. Uh, but what what Joel Embiid was able to do with this 76ers team, he put this team on on his back. Uh, no Ben Simmons, all the little hoopla going on all season long. Uh, everybody talked about how he's been injury prone over his career. Played 68 games. Uh, they needed more from him this season. Oh. Uh, this didn't do. Just didn't. Uh, wasn't just a great scorer this, this year. He was a great playmaker. He, he, he really dominated the block. He dominated the post. Uh, he understood that hey, he was a superstar in this team. And in order for them to, to have any chance, especially with no Ben Simmons, uh, was going to come up to him. Uh, the big question mark was when when they added James Harden. I thought that his production would go down, and it didn't. Uh, leading the lead in, in points, thirty points a game. First big man to do that since Shaq. I'm going with the big fella. I love it. I love that pick. All right, up next, we're going Defensive Player of the Year. You got quite the list there. Adebayo, Jackson, Smart, Bridges. There's so many strong candidates. Who do you like? Marcus Smart. I mean, this this guy right here, man, He's he, I, I thought he deserved it for the last couple of years. I mean, he's a guy that doesn't really worry about his off, offense. He, he's all about making winning plays, especially on the defense end. Boston has really turned the corner, especially after All-Star break, especially on the defense end. And a lot of that had to do with him. His energy, uh, he's able to guard uh, multiple guys uh, on the floor, can guard one through five. He's willing to give his body up, uh, taking charges, diving for loose balls. He's one of them guys that, as me as an offensive player, I, that's the guy I will be having nightmares uh, about, uh, especially the night before the game, because he does all the little things. He don't he don't mind getting into guys' space. He don't end up uh, mind getting up in guys' face. Uh, he's, he's my guy for the defensive player of the year. Giving you nightmares, huh? You think you could score on him? I, I think I could, especially coming off Ben Wallace and Rashi Wallace uh, pin downs and curls. Mm -hmm. But if I had to go at him one on one, I would probably have a little trouble. All right, I'd like to see that. All right, how about most improved player? I feel like this one might be a difficult one to pin down because there's just so many different directions you can go with it. Who do you like? I like Darius Garland. I mean, this guy right here took took the next step. I mean, when you look at guys. Uh, coming into the to the next season, uh, who, who's going to make that all star jump? He was the guy. No Colin Sexton all season long. I mean, he understood that. Hey, I, I got to take the, over not just the point guard role, but also the shooting guard role. Uh, you look at his stats: uh, career highs in points, uh, career high in assists. This guy's a walking bucket. I, I'm not going to compare him to Kyrie Irving, but he has a lot of Kyrie Irving in his game, uh, just because he's undersized, he can create off, off the dribble, he can get space, uh, he takes challenges, he understands uh, he got two big guys underneath the basket where he can make plays for them. So I just think that uh, even though a lot of people say John Morant, it's hard to say John Morant as most improved. I was looking at John Morant as MVP. I would have to go with Darius Garland. Yeah, John Morant definitely the favorite right now to win that award. And Draymond Green had a few thoughts on this as well. Let's take a listen here criteria and it's just personal opinion the award is called the most improved not um you know not who had the best year that's that's the mvp award actually and i think you know a lot of times uh you know we you know we get it confused when, when talking the most improved award of, of who in that group is having the best year you know but 
you know, no disrespect to John Moran, but John Moran's an MVP candidate. John Moran isn't the most improved player candidate. John Moran was fucking incredible last year. Like, um, you know, and so, so when you look around, the most improvement has been Jordan Poole. And I think that that goes without saying. I mean, you can look, again, you go across the list and you, you show me what those guys did last year and the year before that. And you show me what Jordan did last year and the year before that. He is the most improved. So he likes Morant and also give a little shout out to Poole there as well. What do you what do you think about what Green had to say? I, I like it because I do like Jordan Poole. But the only the only difference was that Darius Garland took his before the season, Darius Garland wasn't looked at as, as as an all-star. Cleveland Cavaliers wasn't looked at as a playoff team. Uh Jordan Poole was great all season long. But when you still got Steph Curry. And Steph Curry and, and Clay Thompson is in and out of the lineup, and you move Jordan Poole from the starting lineup to the bench. His point production uh, kind of went down when he went into that role. Yes, he's having an incredible year. He's one of my favorite players in the league right now. He's going to he's going to hit the lottery, uh, especially in free agency. But I do agree with Draymond Green, but don't agree with him saying that he should be the most improved player of the year. All right, all right, we'll take it. So there are two real clear candidates for coach of the year. So obviously Monte Williams with the Suns and Taylor Jenkins with the Grizzlies. There are so many deserving candidates, but who is your coach of the year? I'm, I'm going with Monte Williams. Uh, he's a guy that I competed against uh, early in my career. He was hard nosed, uh, very tough, paid attention to detail. And he got this Phoenix Suns doing the same thing. Uh, it's hard coming out after you lose the NBA finals to the next Next season, uh, I, you know, we experienced that when I played in Detroit, uh, especially knowing that the regular season really doesn't matter and you're going to get judged on what you do in the finals. And everybody still had that in the back of their mind saying that, all right, you know what, what are we going to do in the NBA finals or the playoffs when teams make adjustments and best, especially playing the team in a seven game series? He got this team up every night ready to compete like they're playing like it's their last game. Yes, it helps that you got one of the better leaders in our game and Chris Paul. But I just feel as though from an execution, from a defensive standpoint, he gets these guys ready to go each and every night. I thought he should have got it last year. I thought he got robbed last year on the award. But this year is no way that you can rob him two years in a row. He's been incredible uh, for this Phoenix Suns team. Maybe this will be his year. The Suns the clear favorites going into all this crazy postseason we're about to experience. Now, the NBA play-in tournament begins tonight, 7 Eastern, with the Cavs visiting Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and the Nets. Cleveland's all-star big man, though, Jared Allen, out with a broken finger. How do you think this one's going to play out? That's a huge blow for Cleveland. I mean, anytime you, you're looking on the opposite side and you're looking at KD, Kevin Durant, KD seven foot, he can shoot over anybody. But if there's one way to guard him, you can force him and funnel him into your bigs. And without no Jared Allen, uh, that's going to be tough for the Cleveland Cavaliers, just knowing that the, uh, the Nets have two elite scores with, with Kyrie Irving, and KD, these, these these two guys are on a mission right now. They understand what's at and what's at stake. They understand that, hey, you know what? Kyrie Irving said, hey, usually when I'm playing in the end of the season, I'm I'm just trying to get my rest. I'm trying to get catch, catch a little rhythm out there, but I'm not used to playing at a high level this late in the season. So they have no choice. And I just feel as though Cleveland just has too much on the offense end. Watch Andre Drummond. I mean, he's, he's a big, big plus for this team. I think he's a guy that can really have a huge impact, especially in this series, especially without no Jared Allen. Yeah, the Cavs hoping that their visit to New York turns out a little bit better than the last one, a 118-107 defeat over the weekend. The late game, the T-Wolves hosting the Clippers. It's the 7-8 versus eight game out west. Paul George has returned from injury to help bolster the L.A. team. They'll need him against that duo of Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. So what are your expectations there? Well, first of all, Anthony Edwards has been playing, having an incredible year. He's, he's turning into to a superstar. And, and him and Cat are turning into uh, probably a top five one-two punch in our, in our game right now. But now you look at the Clippers and now adding Paul George back to that team and coming back right about the right time because, you know, the Clippers have really struggled, especially in the last 15 games of the season. But I was very surprised on, on how good he was able to come back and catch a rhythm. And the team really just rallied. Uh, behind him and understand that, hey, we have our superstar player back on this on 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 the roster uh, with Coach Ty Lue, a guy that's you know have you know won a championship 
uh, in the lead, understands the situation. I just believe that the Clippers uh, understand that, hey, you know what? This is just another step for us. Uh, now that we got our superstar player back, uh, we're, we're starting to hit at all cylinders. I just don't think that the, the, the Grizzlies just have enough just from their, from a youth standpoint. So I, if I had to go with a team, I'm going with the Clippers. I just think that they're battle tested. They understand what's at stake. And I just think that their veteran leadership will, will, will lead them to uh, victory. Yeah, and it's been a bit. The T-Wolves, they were so seeking their first playoff appearance since 2018. You're saying it's going to be L.A. Got in that opportunity. We shall see. Now we're going to look ahead. This day in sports history, we're actually going to go back to 2013, April 12, 2013. You got Kobe Bryant here. Take us through what was going on during this moment. First guy, rest, rest his soul, Kobe Bryant. Uh, still believe that this, him not being here is still unreal to me. But uh, it just shows his mental toughness. It wasn't all about his game. Kobe was probably, in my opinion, the toughest player that I ever had to compete against. And this right here shows it. Him going down with an Achilles injury, most guys would have been carried off the court. Uh, but he didn't want that. He still got up, knocked down the free throws. Uh, he probably told his teammates, hey, I'll figure out you know, uh, my leg once I get to the locker room. It shows his mental toughness. And in this game of basketball, you've got not you can't just be physically strong. You got to be mentally tough. And that was a situation where he showed how mentally tough he was. Definitely a moment that I think we all remember knocking down those two clutch free throws after tearing his Achilles tendon against Golden State. Uh, Kobe Bryant. All right. Well, Rip, thank you so much for your time here on CBS Sports HQ. The NBA play-in tournament begins at 7 Eastern tonight. The Cavs visiting the Nets. The winner going on to face the Celtics in the first round. Then at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, the T-Wolves hosting the Clippers. The winner advancing to the first round against the Grizzlies in that one. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.